four, three, two, one. Well, like uh, Rich mentioned, we're uh, we're running shorthanded tonight. Jack sent me an email late uh, last evening and said that he's uh, he pulled up lame with uh, sciatic pain, which I can certainly relate to. So I sure don't blame him for not coming tonight. Uh, so. Uh, it's not my clinic with help, it's all four of us that are equal partners in this thing, so you can blame them as well as me, okay? So, backdrops in general, you know, in my mind, there's three main options. You have just plain sky backdrops, which are better than bare bench work, uh, and so simple to do, just plain sky blue color. Um, you can use photo backdrops or photo mural backdrops, and then we can have painted backdrops and tonight we're going to focus mainly on painted backdrops but we'll touch on the other two topics. A, a plain old sky blue backdrop this gentleman painted his wall with a his uh, version of the color of sky that he liked. Um, actually I really don't know maybe he intended to do more but it gives you the idea that it's, it's so much nicer than just a plain old wall. This particular photo is Barry Dupler's layout in Redmond and um, you can see his plain wall there in the back behind uh, his sawmill uh, complex. Nothing too fancy, but it sure adds uh, a little bit of drama to it. We uh, have probably, most of us have probably read about blending your sky so you have the lighter colors towards the bottom, the, the haziness in the horizon up to the darker blue overhead and if you on these nice days we've been having if you go out and just look at the sky you'll see what we're talking about it's just not all the same uh, tone um, and so I noticed this picture when I was perusing the internet um, and this fellow found out uh, his way of blending the, the backdrops of just getting a couple cans of, of uh, spray paint and spraying away with a, a respirator on of course because it could be a little toxic but there's another method, and that's uh, using latex paint and rollers and brushes. And now Al number one is going to lead us through this process. So Al, you're on center stage. Uh, Brent, can you? Now the paint that I used before, um, okay, in right. 2005, seven cans until last week. <laughs> <laughs> and so I took them down to Ace and had them shake a couple of them. But the third can, they couldn't. I mean, it's a, it's a gel mess. So we're going to do the best we can. <laughs> now the theory is... You're not filming this, are you, Rich? No. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> the theory is, if you take a very clean roller, and real lightly, can that can go off? Do what? Can that thing go off? Buttons on the top. It's killing my Back corner eyes. button there, Tom. It says blank. No, the other towards you. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Just blank. Okay. The idea is if you use this real lightly, it should, um, if there's any... It's, you know, can you see it's, it's actually starting to... Mm -hmm. Blend. Blend somewhat. Wow. Wow. Yes. wow. Beautiful. So much better than mine. <laughs> I wish I'd done that. And you, you reuse that same roller on the next 10 feet? Or you, you can use this for quite a while and then you have to clean it because you want it fairly clean. And I'm not putting that much effort into it. Is it dry or is that slightly damp? No, it was totally dry. Okay. Wow. So anyway. Good. That's great. Oh. Great. Well, that's good. Not better than mine at home. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So do you uh, do house calls? No. <laughs> <laughs> but the color, you know, you, you mentioned when you put that blue up there, that was somebody's idea of sky. Um, you can take those little funny cards they give you and take them outside and compare them. To but once you get them down in your basement or wherever yeah. in your attic, it, it's not the same blue yeah. anymore. All you can do is your best guess at it. Yeah. Uh, and, and what I did is I took, took, I picked a, a middle color that I kind of liked, you know, that I thought was sky. And then I went on that card. They always give you the Steps. little darker and the little lighter. And I just picked them three in a row. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they seem to work okay. Good. Yeah. So, uh, yes. How many feet yeah. horizontally do you do at a time? 
I, I was probably doing about six to eight feet at the time at the most, because it still has to be pretty right, wet. Right. It still has to be wet. And then I would go to the next chunk. Yeah. But Do I you have, have, four you have any feet problem up. with the, between each of those, let's say, six foot sections, having the Vertical it, different? Well, not, not if you blend like crazy. Okay. Because ah. <laughs> if there was another chunk here, I could, even if this is a little dry, the wet here would come into the dry. Mm -hmm. And about how long does one of those rollers last? 50 feet? I mean, probably. Huh. But these are cheaper than doing no, them. Yes, they are. You can buy these things for three for ten bucks or whatever. So do you, do you wash that out and reuse it, or you just buy a roller? I will, because it's too expensive to throw. Yeah. <laughs> just for this. <laughs> That's the reason I brought my... You well, guys all know if you put them in baggies, that they mm -hmm. yes. yeah. last for weeks. Yes. Or yes. Time. Years. But if you wash it, then it's going to be damp no matter what, so you have to set it aside and not use yeah. it. Right, no, you can't use it. I take mine with the garden hose and the brass nozzle, and I set it at an angle so it doesn't spray me. And as you hit the center of it, it gets the paint out real deep. And as you move to the outer edge, it spins so fast it's dry before or I close. hang it up. Kind of like your, your clothes dryer. Yeah. Bill, clothes do you make house calls? <laughs> <laughs> See, anyway, he's more, he said he would. Is that good enough? Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Can I turn that? Oh, now here's what he gave me the first time. Throw some clouds up. Look at the other side. It's blue. he already painted it blue. Yeah. Uh, when he gave me this board, he, I would suggest you do not start with blue. I started with white. Uh huh. So I think that's the best way to do it. Uh -huh. That's the reason I did the back side and painted it blue. Uh -huh. Huh. Okay. Now that was a good color for dusk. Not what you see in the store, and it will take a different cast. If you use 5,000K lamps on your layout like I do, it's not going to be the same as the cool white uh, fluorescent. fluorescent you see in the store. Hmm. There is a difference, yeah. If you go to uh, Home Depot, for example, they, every single color in their color chips, you can buy a little teeny jar. Uh, I think it's six or eight ounces of sample of that color. You can take it home and try it out, see if you like it, before you buy a mm -hmm. gallon of the stuff. It's like four bucks or five bucks. Or like that. Tom is, has been applying a little bit of blue paint on his wall, so he's right there. <laughs> this is an opportunity. And, you know, fresh was too late for me. I, I did this about two months ago, and I was having just all sorts of fits and, and everything with my blending. And, and then Ted, where you? Ted gave me the idea to use the paintbrush rather than a roller to try and blend them and have the brush damp. Not, not dripping wet, but damp. And so I tried that and it made my uh, uh, transition, I guess you could call it, a lot better. Hmm. Then I <laughs> screwed it all up when I tried to paint clouds, but we're going to get into that in a few minutes with Nick here. And I have to paint it blue and start over again. So <laughs> now I'm going to have blue paint all over the computer here. Okay, so. Uh, did you get a paper towel? I did. There's a bunch right there. Thank you. Are we back on? We are back on. Okay, moving right along. So, um, yeah, so plain old blue sky is okay, but we could add clouds to it, and that adds some interest without doing anything else. Just some plain old hazy clouds up in the in the sky, and we can do that several ways. We can use stencils, we can hand paint the clouds, uh, we can mist with spray paint, getting some some vague ideas, some clouds up there. There's one more that I forgot to put on here, and that's using sponge uh, sponges. You can you can uh, it's sort of dry brushing with a sponge. You get some white paint, and then you blot most of it off, and then you just kind of dab the backdrop, and and you get some images of clouds. So anyway, uh, now for our next uh, clinician, Nick is going to show us his method of uh, stenciling. Cloud. You know, probably the first time I ever attempted serious backdrop was a uh, club layout we had when I was in medical school. And we put in a masonite and uh, cove the corners, including the compound corner, and mudded them and taped them and did all that and painted it blue. And about that time, uh, I was done with uh, school. <laughs> so, <laughs> as far as that layout got. Um, then I had a layout in the garage. I put masonite up and I bought... Uh, cloud wallpaper, just for a room. So it was designed for, you know, a seven foot, eight foot wall. So obviously only the lower portion of that would, were the clouds anywhere near the right size, which means I had to buy two sets of it in order to do this and basically wasted the other half of the set. Um, clouds were still too big and 
you could see the dithering. You know, if you wanted to take close-up pictures, you could see the dithering in the, it was used to print the backdrop. So when it came time to do the uh, basement and the layout, uh, well, yeah, just before that, the magazines was using a sponge, put a sponge on a stick and put paint on it. And an interesting thing is it looked like you had put a sponge and put paint on it. <laughs> so, uh, it, was a, it was a step up from no clouds at all. But, uh, so this technique of spraying the clouds, I actually went to their clinic, and they, sell, they sold the stencils, they sell the stencils, and I bought a set and played with those. But... Uh, the size of the clouds was too big for what I wanted to do. You know, uh, when I visited my grandmother's farm in the, North, in the Midwest, they were all the puffy little clouds, you know, puffy little line upon line upon line onto the horizon as far as you could see. And so uh, I made my own stencils. I suppose, I suppose I should have brought them. But what I did was I took a slide of a photograph of those kinds of clouds. And I projected it onto a piece of cardstock. I think it's probably about two by three feet, something like that. And then I, I drew the clouds on there. And the idea was at first I would cut the clouds. I would try to figure out what to do. So the big puffy clouds that are on the top, I cut those out. So it was a hole in the stencil. But the problem is, actually I cut out I think I cut them all out, actually. But the problem was, when you sprayed that, all the edges of the cloud were sharp, top, bottom, every side, and it produced what I call cloud measles. <laughs> that didn't look good at all. And so then what I did is I drew a pencil line like that, and then oh, a couple inches lower, lower, another pencil line connecting the clouds and cut them apart. And then I took more cardstock and tape each one of those strips to the bottom of a piece of cardstock. So it was strips of that original stencil uh, cut all the way from big down to little. Um, and then I um, numbered them so I could get them in the right order. And that turned out to be a good idea. The uh, upper large clouds, you could, you could use them uh, provided you hit the stencil of those large clouds at an angle focusing mainly on the top edge. So you didn't end up with the white cloud, the giant cloud measle. Uh, it was fully outlined, but uh, bolder at the top and softer at the bottom. And then I would take the next number down and pull that up, and the next number down, and that's how I did this, going from these big clouds up here to these little, of course, the closer they get to the horizon, they get uh, straighter and smaller and closer together. Uh, so that's the way I did the stencils for this. The important thing is that you start with a dark enough blue. So, you know, at church, the kids class for the little people, um, she wanted me to do that for their room. And uh, so they painted, they said, we'll paint the room blue for you. Well, they didn't check with me. And of course, the, it was such light blue that actually the white hat hardly showed up. It has to be dark. Uh, and I don't think, you know, unless you look right at the very edge, you can't see this paint um, as dark as it really was. And you start at the top. Now, what I'll learn by experience, unfortunately, is that you have to hold the stencil away from the backdrop. Two inches, you know, it's kind of it's kind of eyeball thing, but not flat against the backdrop, for sure. And you want the paint can not real close either, so you're spraying on a heavier layer of paint. You want it back further so you're dusting it. And you can get a feel for it. You go by once and you, you can kind of see it. If it doesn't look dark, uh, white enough, go by again. And what that does is produce the sharp <coughs> tops of the clouds. But the bottom, there is no bottom. It just fades off into dust. So that as you progress from top to bottom, these lower part of the sky automatically begins to be lighter from the dust of all the clouds that you painted above. And when you're done, if it isn't as light as you want, um, you know, you freehand. So, you know, I'll come along here. See, I should, a little, little bowl right there, I could come along with a light pass with a spray and uh, soften that down. Or, or, you know, if, there's a, if there's a mismatch where you go to the next set of stencils, you can spray that out. And the important thing is to start on the light side 
Uh, you can always spray more, but if you produce a giant defect that's pure white, you're, you're not going to get rid of that by adding more paint. You're sort of <laughs> stuck with that. Um, let's see, what else to say? Oh, yes, of course, they used a uh, book. Well, I described this in an article on wine model railroad hobbyists, and uh, they used a color by Sherman Williams called Universe Blue. And uh, you can't get that anymore, though uh, someone has found a color match for that. So I, that's in that article. And also another match that I used is in that article. And nothing magic except it's got to be dark enough. And often that's darker than you would normally think. Nick, All, yes? Are you going to tell us about the use of an airbrush versus a can of paint? No. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. An airbrush, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, and no airbrush, you know, I've painted a hundred millennial feet of clouds. No airbrush that I know would deliver enough paint fast enough to complete that within the remainder of my natural life. Uh, and it, maybe it's a takeoff, or no, number one, of course, they didn't do that way originally. You know, George Selios, if you've watched any of his videos, he, he paints his structures with the spray cans you get from the hardware store. He doesn't do them with an airbrush. So I've got, you know, uh, colonial red. That's how I do all my brick buildings with a spray bomb, not the airbrush. And there's no cleaning afterwards either. But so these folks originally recommended the use of Krylon flat white paint. And I'm sure there's other ways you could do it, but I kind of tend to stick with what works. And uh, Krylon is fast drying. It's a good quality paint. Um, I, know what, I know what it's going to act like. It's a good idea to get one of those spray handles that fits on the can, otherwise you're going to get a pretty right. uh, cramped up finger after a while. Uh, let's see, what else? Wear a, we need to wear a respirator mask for that. Um, it's good for this kind of paint fumes. They, when I went to their clinic, they said, have any of you tried our cloud painting method? Yes. And did you use a Krylon paint like we recommended? Yes. And did any of you notice as the evening wore on, all those clouds just started looking at <laughs> Oh, look at those clouds. But, um, so, anyway, you know, uh, I'm in a basement, and so I have a ventilating exhaust fan, so I turn that on to use the respirator. How'd you hold the sitzel out two inches? Or just with your hand? Yep. One hand sprays yep. the other one. Spray it out one, throw Did it down. Did you move the stencil a little as you were No. You, no. you could do that. You might end up with a double, kind of a double image that would look weird. So I normally don't move them. You have to be careful not to spray off the end of the stencil and then have a vertical line. Yeah. So how, how wide were the stencils? About three feet. Okay. Yeah, about like that. <laughs> then the other, so you know, obviously then you're going to either need to do this at a stage early enough in the layout where it won't be a problem, which is what I did, um, or you're going to have to drape everything because it makes a lot of Dust, overspray dust. The other thing I did was to try to make sure that not all the clouds were the same. All the way around the whole room, yeah. they all look exactly the same. So I tried to make places that had more clouds, places that had less clouds, places that had clouds swept up like that, um, so that there was a variation and it didn't all look just exactly the same. How so, many stencils did you need for your long backdrop? Make them, make them like I would get, you know, I had I made two of the giant sheets and cut them up. And there's probably, I don't know, how many numbers were there? Do you remember? Eight, oh, ten, oh, somewhere. Right. It, it set A and B had like 12 or 13. Yeah, okay, each. so there was an A set and B set somewhere around 12 or 13 stencils. Per set. And, so you made these clouds here. A little further down, you can just flip that around and use it somewhere else. You think, well, people will notice that. Not really. I do that all the time. And, and if you do it right, no one will say, oh, look, those clouds are exactly the reverse of those clouds. Because there's enough of them, you can't tell. I have a set that, that I borrowed, um, uh, ready-made ones, apparently. And it's, like you say, they're about two feet long. And they're cut where the cloud is at the bottom. There's nothing down here. The cloud yes, is that. Yes, yes. But they, the ones that I got it from, said tape it up. Well, like, oh, yeah, no. No, no, no. Oh. That didn't work. Well. Yeah, that's going to not but be But you can good. either overlap them to get various things, but I like the way you said yeah. holding them. 
yeah. except yeah. pose a few were no. not comfortable just holding it and eyeballing it. You could tape a piece of foam back there or something that would space it away from the wall. Mm -hmm. And again, that's the advantage of the Krylon, which dries really fast. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can work also. That's why you can throw the stencil down on the floor, throw another one on top of it, and another one on top of that. They're not going to stick together because it dries so fast. You're not going to have a room full of gummy stencils <laughs> that you're going to have to wait till they dry before you can go on to do something more. So uh, what? So of course, so, so for the main part of the basement, uh, that's how I did it. The, you know, the wallboard was up. I painted it blue. I painted the clouds. But actually, for the new section, I added for the lower deck of that layout, I did it in the reverse. I fitted all these masonite pieces in place temporarily, then I took them into the shop and painted them blue mm -hmm. on the floor, just put visqueen down and painted them blue with a roller, I mean that was really fast. Mm -hmm. And this shows the stencils. Oh, yeah. You can see the ones at the top which actually have a full, uh, you know, cl complete cloud shapes. And then you can see the ones down below. That's B1, and then here's B2 and B3 and B4. Uh, and you can see where I've taken the original white uh, cardstock and taped it to this brown stuff to uh, make to hold it. Uh, let's see what else here. Then <laughs> the other advantage of that was I could just um, put it on the fence. When actually white overspray on a white fence, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Except I did decide to do this. This was an afterthought. The whole thing's an afterthought because I never intended to have seasons on my layout. It would all be summer. Don't fool with it. But, but then somewhere along the line, I thought, you know, it might be fun. So back on the back side near the Pullman car, where it's over the other side of a mountain, it will be autumn and not visible really from the rest of the room. After it spirals all the way down to the lower level, when it comes out of the tunnel, it will be winter. <laughs> and so this is the first time I ever attempted a gray sky, and I used two exotic colors, gray, light gray primer and dark gray primer, <laughs> and used the same stencils, and it turned out pretty well. Uh, the other thing I've done, which uh, I thought was good, it, so Al taught me into using the LED I'm not really rope strip lights, lights. Yeah. strip lights, to light the lower section. Boy, that is so cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, no heat generated. I didn't have any room. I didn't want heat up under the layout, and I didn't have any more amps on that breaker box. <laughs> it's pretty well used up. <laughs> and so, I, uh, you know, you get the yellow-white LED strips. And that was great. Yes. Nick, what do your neighbors think of you when you do this on your? Oh, they're all. Yeah, I mean, they've all visited the basement. They're all used to it. Yeah. Yeah, I did get in trouble once. So, um, on the nose of my F unit, that Herald, I projected that from a slide. It's, uh, and then I, on Frisket, I drew it and trued it up with a ruler, cut it out. So, but so I had to do that outside, and I had to have the projector back quite a ways to get the size right. And so it had to be dark, and so one night about 11 o'clock, I woke up, and I thought, well, this is a night I don't really feel like getting out of bed at 11 o'clock, but it's a, it's a warm night, and it's dark, and so I put the thing up against the garage door, and had to set the projector almost out to the street in order to do that. I noticed the uh, teenager across the street, her room light was on. I thought, well, you know, the school light, she's up 11 o'clock. Then the light went out, and I thought, well, that's great. It's about time she was in bed anyway. And then pretty soon, here came a zebra woolly patrol car. Oh, <laughs> that street. And up that street with their lights off, and they stopped just short of our property, and I saw the officer get out. <laughs> There's any law against projecting <laughs> photographs on the garage? <laughs> Apparently, he didn't think so. He got back in the car and backed around the corner. And so, yeah, no, I didn't have that problem because I could do this during the day. So, whereas I use the yellow white LEDs here, where it's supposed to be sunlight, uh, I use the blue white ones here. So, it's a very cool white. So, when I put the snow and things there, it should produce a very nice effect. So it's the first time I ever tried the dark clouds, and I was pleased. I think, again, all these things stand out because they're not part of a layout. But when you get the trees and the building and everything in there, I think it'll, it'll work good. 
So another thing I did then, I said, you know, I want to vary how the clouds look. So I had previously marked on the backdrop various locations <coughs> of the layout, basically towns. So that's what these yellow sticky notes are. So this is going to be at this location. Notice I sort of ended the clouds there. It's just sort of cloud. There's less clouds there. So there they are back in the uh, shop, all painted. Probably took me an hour to spray the clouds. And again, wow. having it on the fence was real easy to stand up height. And, and, uh, any questions? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Nick mentioned uh, Krylon. Jim Tart is here tonight. I guess no, he's not. No, he, uh, no. He's got a severe uh, allergy problem, and he uh, odors really bother him. And I, I was going to show him this, but this is Krylon's H2O. It's water-based spray paint. Mm -hmm. You can buy this in uh, Ace. Some Ace stores have more than others. Mm -hmm. Shit, they did not have it in the big box stores last time I looked, but mm -hmm. you can find it over there. And so it's and it's a bit coarse. It's a primer for. Uh, Drywall, you know, so it's, it's not quite as fine as Krylon, but if you're looking for something that doesn't leave an odor, this is this is a trick. 